be ready 5 seconds start the counter affidavit reveals that the petitioner's husband died on account of cancer the respondents have tried to justify the rejection of the petitioner's husband application on the ground that the petitioner has received terminal benefits amounting to rupees 32,76,332 towards provident fund gratuity and cashment of the death relief fund etc. The respondents have further tried to justify the rejection of the petitioner's husband application on the ground that the petitioner's husband could not fulfill the procedural requirement of the scheme namely that he was required to fill the form accepting the report of the medical board and accepting the payment of full and final settlement for past and future liability including the scheme for reinstatement and other benefits for this purpose. A memorandum of settlement was also required to be signed by the employee which the petitioner's husband could not do so as he was in a semi-conscious stage and was unable to append his signature. The respondents thus contended that since the petitioner's husband could not fulfill the procedural requirement under the scheme, his claim for premature retirement was rejected. Having heard the learned counsel for the parties and having examined the scheme and the format of settlement that was required to be signed by employee, we find that the onus was totally upon the respondent's company to examine the medical report and pass an appropriate order on it. The main criteria under the scheme is that a conclusion was required to be arrived at as to whether the employee could continue to do the job for which he was engaged. This conclusion is to be passed on the basis of the medical report. The medical report indicates that the petitioner's husband was not fit to continue for the job in which he was engaged. The medical report has not been disputed by the respondent's company. The opinion given by the medical board in fact has been accepted by the respondent company. The mere fact that the petitioner's husband was not in a position to sign any further document could not allow the company to reject his application on a technicality. If the medical condition of the petitioner's husband was in such a deteriorating condition that he was unable to put his signature, then it was all the more necessary for the respondent company to discharge him under the premature medical retirement scheme. The action of the respondents in rejecting the petitioner's husband application, in our opinion, appears to be wholly arbitrary and violative of Article 14 of the Constitution of India. Even though terminal dues has been paid to the petitioner, the same was not done out of largesse being granted by the respondent company. The petitioner's husband was entitled to receive such terminal benefits as a matter of right under the terms and conditions of service. When the respondent floated the scheme dated 1812-2013 with regard to premature retirement, an additional incentive was given 
for payment of ex gratia in addition to the terminal benefits such as provident fund gratuity and cashment of leave etc we are of the opinion that considering the opinion given by medical board and the state of health of the petitioner's husband the application for premature retirement on medical grounds should have been allowed if the respondents had not acted in an arbitrary and cavalier fashion the petitioner's husband would also have been entitled to the ex gratia as per the circular on 1812 2013 for the reasons stated a for said we quash the impugned order dated 31st august 2015 by which the petitioner's husband application for premature retirement was rejected as well as the order dated 23rd march 2005 by which the petitioner's representation was also rejected we issue a writ of mandamus commanding the respondents to treat the petitioner's husband as retired prematurely with effect from 13th july 2004 that is date when the petitioner's husband application was rejected by the respondents and direct the respondent company to grant the benefits which are payable under the circular of 1812 2013